cœur.
morning, David. Good morning, Bill. I'm sorry to hear about your battery. You know, the funniest thing, I'm getting dressed this morning and I said, holy cow, I'll bet all three of us will be there. This will really be neat. Yeah, I was looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dave isn't here either. <laughs> and I haven't heard from him, so I don't know. <laughs> what a couple of flunkies you got, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, eh, we're the best we can be. That's right. And yeah. I know Dave has got a real issue with taking care of his sister going on. So I don't that know. turns out to be uh, a hell of a lot harder than you think. <laughs> From what I've seen. <laughs> All of it turns out to be harder than you think. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. Well, I don't know. Here we are. Here we are. Other than that, we're all doing good. Well, um, yeah, I'm delighted. You seem to be in really good shape at the moment. <laughs> well, you know... Yeah, I, uh, I I got some funny stuff going on. And, uh, you know, I got a numbness in my fingers and my feet. Huh. And, uh, you know, of course, I, I called the doctor. Not called, but I mean, I went on my chart and yeah. wrote them. And, uh, well... Bottom line is the nurse called me and we talked about it and all. And then she said, I'm going to pass you over and set up an appointment. It might not be tomorrow. And uh, that was uh, Thursday, I guess. Hmm. Well, March 20th. <laughs> ah. Ah. And I said, you know, I got a regular meeting with him. On March 27th, what the hell? This is no big deal. All right. Well, we're going to put you on standby or call or, yeah. you know, whatever. And uh, so I don't know. Anyway, along with that, I would say for three or four years, I have been eating religiously nine gin-soaked raisins. Every morning, uh -huh. which is supposed to help my arthritis. Well, never got any better. <laughs> my knuckles swell. My hands hurt. Because <laughs> my hip bothers me. So then I read, well, what about sour cherries? So, <laughs> undaunted, I bought some sour cherry capsules, and I started taking them a couple of months ago. Yeah. And then didn't pay any attention to it. And one day, I realized, whoa, gee, my, my hands don't hurt. You know? That's great. And I'm looking, and... Gee, the swelling is going down. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, sour cherry capsules are, the, you know, are uh, the greatest, but <laughs> it's a step in the right direction. And it you helps. know, David, I have a book, and I don't know, maybe you recommended it. It was, it's about. It's like an acupressure book on, you know, if this is bothering you, try this type yeah. of thing. I have scoured throughout the house trying to find it because I uh, I wanted to, um, oh, I wanted to see about my circulation. Yeah. And uh, because I, I, I think this numbness and stuff 
is is probably circulation. Anyway, that's where I'm at, and I feel pretty good because uh, there seems to be progress, and so I'm taking it. <laughs> good. It's a sign. And you, and you can't find the book, huh? No, no, <laughs> no. I. Did you want the what? title? <laughs> Do you know what it is? Not off the top of my head, but it's on my shelf. <laughs> I know the book you're you're speaking of. I have over the years I've used it every once in a while. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take it a minute. No rush. Yeah. I uh, I've only spent a couple hours searching for it. I, I'm sure there's <laughs> more time that I can put aside for it. <laughs> awfully frustrating. <laughs> Uh, well, welcome to our world. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm going to ring the bell. All right. And we are. Well, I, I don't have to stand up, I guess. No, you don't have to stand up yet. <laughs> All right. Okay. I have to tell you that um, I've actually uh, been practicing just about every day until recently. Uh, I went down to the Polish club to help one of the other people clean. We washed down the whole club, the woodwork and the walls and everything. Oh. And I've been crippled ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Getting up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, if I would just put a little bit more energy into exercising and doing my Tai Chi, I'm sure I would be in much better shape than I am. Well, it would probably help. I mean, I don't know. Hard to know. I um, certainly it makes a difference. I mean, I um, I have my routine every day. Um, I I need to do it, or my body doesn't function as well. Um, so. Well, anyway, anyway, I, I give you a ton of credit for doing it every day. <laughs> I, I know how hard it is. Well, you know, one of the things to remember is that you don't have to do two hours of practice every day. <laughs> um, I, I really liked, uh, uh, I've, I've uh, quoted, um, can't say his last name, Bill, the guy up in uh, Massachusetts that is uh, Bruce's senior disciple that I studied with for a while. He, uh, his, his rule was to uh, commit to absolutely, no matter what, practicing one minute a day. I've heard you say that before. Yeah. And right. and maybe one minute is all you do, but at well, least at least you've done the minute. That is just so sneaky. Yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> that a disciple would <laughs> would be that sneaky. It's like sneaking up on you, you know. Yeah, because you're probably going to do more than a minute, but yeah. I think so. But giving yourself the permission to only do a minute relieves the pressure of, oh, I've got to do more. <laughs> you know, it is. It's actually uh, <laughs> very sage advice. Yeah. Um, 
So anyway, so yes. um, I was going to um, complicate our standing practice a little. Okay. <laughs> um, this whole training we're doing is called the Eight Gates Training by Master Joe and is related to the Eight Gates, the eight, um, actually eight primary trigrams from the Yi Jing, um, which combine, of course, to make the 64 hexagrams of the, of the entire Yi Jing. And these eight gates can be thought of in a number of different ways. Um, actually, um, you can look in the Yi Jing and uh, get very specific discussions of them there. And I included some of that in the handout uh, with one that has my pictures in it. Uh, that I, gave you some time ago. Um, but another way to look at it is to think of the eight as relating also at the same time <laughs> to the five elements and the three primary energy uh, centers in the body. So when we think of it that way, we begin to think about the organs which are related to the five elements and how we can increase the energy in each of those. And we always, of course, each element has a yin organ and a yang organ, but we always approach through the yin because the yin is receptive and therefore, it is much easier to access the yin organ and to bring energy into that element. So rather than um, simply focusing on the, the surface um, pulsing of the energy, we can think of this whole stand, the standing practice as breathing energy into these specific eight places in the body. So I will send you a handout on all of this. <laughs> OK. So with water, the yin organ are the kidneys. And um, so when we go to Khan water, we would actually focus on trying to breathe directly into the kidneys. And then Li fire relates to the heart. The heart is the, the yin organ. And so we would focus on the heart. Sun, wind or wood, uh, is liver. Um, Jun, thunder, uh, is the metal element. So it, that is um, the lungs. And um, earth uh, is mountain. And that is central equilibrium. And the organ is spleen. And then, of course, when we think of the three energy centers in the body, the uh, Qian heaven relates to the third eye, to the energy of Shun, um, spiritual energy of, of the um, mind. Um, ka, uh, kun relates to the lower Dantian. And um, lake, cloud, dewy uh, relates to the middle Dantian, which is located 
right at the base of the sternum, um, just just below the the bone. Um, when you um, hit the the soft area below the the uh, ribs and the and the sternum, you can actually eventually very concretely feel each of these and feel them expanding and contracting. Um, and I'm not sure that I've mentioned this before, but um, <laughs> actually due to the fact that the, uh, I'm not sure he's still there, but the man who was the head of Harvard Medical School had uh, gone to China for a while and become really interested in uh, traditional Chinese medicine and was a great believer in alternative medicine and um, <laughs> believed in the qi. Um, he had heard that that Bruce was capable of um, moving any organ in any direction he wanted to move it and he didn't believe it. So they invited him to <laughs> the Harvard Medical School and put him under, under a, a lot of machines and lo and behold he could. So that's taking this ability to a, a level that I'm not expecting any of us uh, to actually achieve. Um, but we do want to really begin um, as we're breathing into these organs uh, and, and energy centers uh, to begin to try to be aware of those areas expanding and contracting a little. Mm. Question? Um, expanding and contracting a little. Uh, let's take the heart, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing we both are very familiar with our hearts. So, what do you mean by expanding and contracting? So with the heart, you, you need to be uh, particularly gentle. Um, whereas with the other organs, you can actually specifically feel them literally expand as you inhale and contract as you exhale. That, that, and um, I can do that with, with those organs. With the heart, you're not particularly trying to feel it actually expanding and contracting, but rather um, often it's suggested that, that one focus on the pericardium rather than the heart itself. But what we really, one of the things, one of the ways to do, to approach the breathing into the heart is to really develop uh, that stage of longevity breathing where you can expand and contract the upper back. Because when you do that, along with the movement of the um, lower Dantian, you actually pump the heart in between those two movements. So that's it. I'm, nothing to it. <laughs> so I don't know that you've ever worked on, have you worked on on longevity breathing in any uh, not really focused way no so that's when every once in a while I've talked through breathing in in various areas of the body um, obviously the the lower abdomen the, the lower dantian is we're I'm assuming you probably are are able to do. Um, that's um, kind of the basic place that we begin with. Um, and and each of these areas of the longevity breathing, you you really have to work on each one 
at a time, and then and when it's comfortable, you go to the next one. But basically, the sequence is to work with the lower uh, abdomen first, and then with the sides. So you actually want to get the ribs to expand a little. Um, so that you actually begin to get a little bit of movement in the side of the body. And it, it won't be big, it will be very small. Um, you're not going to get the kind of movement that you get with the lower abdomen, of course. But you um, actually are really trying to get the sides to expand and contract a little um, all the way from the waist to the armpit. And then when you go to the back, there really you work on three areas. Um, the lower back, um, the area down around the sacrum and up um, to the, perhaps the, the bottom of the ribs, um, is actually relatively easy because it works with the lower abdomen and so as you um, bring your awareness and intent to that lower back um, generally it's relatively easy to get it to move with the abdomen um, the mid backs a little more difficult but it's <clears throat> important because that's one of the important ways to focus into the kidneys to move the that get that um, mid back to expand and contract and so that's getting the the lower ribs in the back to move and then really the more difficult one is the upper back because you remember that with um, Taoist breathing, we don't want to expand the chest, which is kind of a Western military uh, breathing. Um, you want the chest to stay still. And for the, as you inhale, for the back to expand and contract, because that then begins to uh, cause movement in the heart and the lungs. So that's another area. Yeah, I, think, I remember that uh, we did uh, work on that. I can't remember when, for some odd reason, I thought it was with... Uh, You know, the, the standing one we do, uh, where we move the energy first before we start. Uh huh. Uh, the Wu style? No, the. Uh, uh, oh, Dragon and Tiger? Dragon and Tiger. Was, uh -huh. was, did we do breathing along with that, or was that something? I, I, yeah, I certainly would have mentioned it. <laughs> anyway, I do remember it, and yeah. uh, I do remember being able to get up. I think the best I did was into the middle back. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Yep. So you might uh, just do a little focus of breath into breathing in in your yes. practice. Um, yep. It's a, um, it's a really important, it's actually the first of the 16 Negong, the, the internal energy practices. So, um, okay. let's do the standing and I'll talk breathing into the organs and the energy centers. Sounds good. So 
to begin stepping out with the right and coming into center really being aware of arriving at your base level so the the qua is relaxed and allow you to sit down slightly begin with weight centered in the middle of both feet and really softening and opening the feet and the ankles allowing you to connect down into the earth keeping the perineum open <clears throat> and the qua relaxed at the moment the midriff open the armpits open throat notch, relaxed, and by way, open to the universe. And then focusing on your breath, <clears throat> first allow it just to slow a little, to lengthen, Be aware of expanding the abdomen as you inhale and contracting a little as you exhale. But with no movement of the chest. And then taking your awareness and intent down to the sides, just low down for the moment around the waist and into the bottom ribs. See if you can get a little bit of movement there as you inhale and expand and contract as you exhale. And then breathing into the lower back. Let you feel the movement down around the sacrum. And you can let the lower Dantian be the leader of the band here as you think about this breath. And then breathe into the mid-back, feeling those lower ribs begin to expand a little bit as you inhale and contract a little as you exhale. And being aware that this breathing encourages energy to move in and out of the kidneys. And just for a moment, also see if you can get any movement in the upper back. The chest remaining stable.
and then beginning to flow into the eight gates. So continuing all the bending and twisting we worked on, but now focusing into that third eye area, the upper Dantian. Endeavoring to inhale into it and exhale out of it. Actually feel that area moving. And then going down to Kun, Earth, the lower Dantian. the yin center. Continuing to feel that inhale drawing in and exhale expanding out. That area contracting and expanding. And going to con water. And here we want to focus on the kidneys. So really focusing on expanding that mid back area as you exhale. And contracting, drawing energy in. Sending the used energy out. And coming up to heart and endeavoring to expand the upper back and contract it, draw fresh energy in and allow the used or noxious to flow out. Flowing down to wood, focusing on the liver. Breathe into your liver. Exhale that used energy. Draw fresh chi in. And release the used. And flowing up to thunder, the metal element, lungs. And having a real sense of bringing not just air, but chi into your lungs. down to mountain, the earth element, spleen on the left side of the torso. Drawing fresh chi in, releasing any used or noxious. Fresh in, used out. And then flowing into the middle Dantian, in the center of the body. Bringing fresh energy in.
even closing Going into your lower Dantian. about that oh that was pretty good <laughs> good <laughs> I think you the, uh, sounded surprised at that <laughs> I did yes good um yeah the breathing has uh needs work hmm that's really important. <laughs> we, we don't do well if we don't breathe. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, David, you uh, <laughs> come out with some gems. Oh, do I? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, one of the things that um, Master Joe often talked about in relation to uh, the the five elements and the and the eight gates um, is he he likened uh, the movements of those functions and areas um, to the cycle of the moon. Hmm. That, you have the 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 new moon and the full moon and then um the the old moon beginning and the dark of the moon and um this is another way to think about um the basic um dynamic sphere as a matter of fact um if I would turn over one of the um, Tai Chi twos on the wall here, I have his diagram of <clears throat> how that relates to the uh, to the Yin Yang diagram. And um, so I I just thought I would mention it because it <clears throat> it really is. Um, a good way to think about the flow of the energy because it's always going um, of course in and out but it's in a cycle and it's very easy to see this in the um, in the basic dynamic sphere because we actually start um, at the at the dark of the moon <laughs> And then we have the new moon and the full moon. And then we have the old moon and the dark of the moon. And then maybe you have the new moon and the full of the moon again and then the old moon and it goes back to the dark so this is just another way to to think about the flow of the energy there because that aligns um, very specifically with the the yin yang flow in there 
You know what absolutely amazes me? That it's only been within the last month or so that I realized that, you know, it's, and then, you know, you come down through it. Yep. In front of you. And I, half the time I did those <laughs> way out, well, half, all the time. I, I, you know, went all yeah. the way to the side. I, that was, when you said that one day, I thought, oh my God, yeah, look, that's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 20 years, David. <laughs> well, um, it takes- You're never too old to learn. <laughs> there, There's a lot. There's a lot to learn. Yes, uh, you, know, you know, and and uh, as I often have said, <laughs> it isn't easy. No, it isn't. It's all very simple, right? But it isn't easy. <laughs> yep. And we sometimes confuse those two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm sure, as an engineer, you ran into that. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. So, um, where would be helpful to you, since um, you're the only one here in the um, eight gates? So, what, what would be helpful to work on? Um, well, so I really like. Um, you know, going through, just holding the, the hands like a ball of energy, going through that, doing that for a while. And then, of course, doing what you just did. And then what I do after that is I go into the single arm. Mm. And those are the three that I do in a row. And, of course, what... What I realize is that um, I try when my arm is out to be back on the heel, and when I'm com my arm is coming in to move forward mm -hmm. toward the front of the foot, and um, just the whole magilla is it's. It's not that easy to, to, <laughs> to get it exactly the way I think it should be. So, yeah, I'd like to go over that. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, I'll do. The, I'll be doing a single arm, and I'll do three, four days in a row, and then all of a sudden, and it's usually right at the beginning. And I forget what count it's in, but when you move your right foot, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to do with my arms all of a sudden. Oh, okay. And so I go back and I look at one of our sessions and I run through it until we do the single arm and I say, oh yeah, okay, there it is. And I come <laughs> back and do it. <laughs> Anyway. So don't, don't feel bad. Uh, we all do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not as bad now as it used to be. Mm -hmm. I, I don't beat myself up for it. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, don't beat yourself up and don't overthink it. Well, yeah, I overthink things. Um, I, I, I've kind of come to the conclusion that, you know, it would be a lot better if I didn't concentrate on trying to do everything exactly right. <laughs> yeah. And just flow. But 
it's difficult for me to fall off of that cliff. Yep. Um, I see that. Yeah. And uh, I keep saying to myself, okay, okay, all right, all right. As soon as you get this down, then you can let go and just flow. <laughs> so yeah. I'm waiting for that day. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> you know, right. the, you know the answer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, do, do some practice where you really focus on what you're trying to work on. And then do a flow when you just flow. Whatever happens, happens. Um, and, and really that's, that's important to allow yourself to do that. Well, one of the things I have found out when I've dabbled in just letting myself flow is that if there's something I'm not remembering, if I keep just flowing, eventually it comes back. Yeah, often it will. That's true. Mm. Good. Well, so let's do those three things. Okay. Uh -oh. I just, I, I, I'm just so. Uh, I don't know right word. Enthusiastic. Um, I, I really just love doing them. Or so. There is something, yeah, satisfying about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, can I just watch you at first? Yeah. yeah. Let me just close the doors because I think Gene will be coming home pretty soon. Okay. So um, a couple of things I would say. Um, 
Well, one is when you are going up, you get, your body gets stuck by getting clear up before you complete the rotational and movement and the movement of the arms. But when you go down, you keep the movement sinking all the way down, no problem. So you just have to come up a little more slowly. Okay. Um, and so that you have cons constant and consistent body movement. Um, the other thing I would just say, you can also do this without moving the arms at all. You're raising and lowering your arms, which is fine, but not necessary. Yeah. So it's not wrong or bad. I'm just saying you no, might, I know. You might uh, play with the, uh, just holding the hands still. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the problem is that that often when you're coming up and you're lifting the arms, your shoulders also go up, and that interferes with the flow of the energy through your neck. Okay. So. Yeah, good. That's, that's much better. Um, how did that feel to you? That, that was better. Um, what I try to do when I'm, when I'm coming up is try to bring my elbows out mm -hmm. and, and, and lengthen my arms. But it's not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I try to, that's what I try to do. Yeah. So really, when you do that, and that's a good thing, um, really think of the connection of your elbows to your scapula. Okay. Your shoulder blades. So think yeah. of that movement actually causing your uh, shoulder blades to go out from the spine and in from the spine as your elbows move. And okay. The, your scapula may not move a lot, but yeah. but they'll they will move a little. Another little week. Yep. <laughs> well, that really begins to open the flow of the energy from the shoulders to the spine. Okay. Um, so, how about when I moving the arms in and out toward the body? That's that's fine. You can do a little bit of that. Uh, it doesn't need to be extreme. In okay. This particular practice. All right. Okay. All right. So you want to go to the next one? Yeah.
Smacking my arm. Yeah, so you're, <laughs> the, the problem is you're lifting your elbow too high. Okay. Um, That's good. You can see me here. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's happening is you're getting up here and instead of having the elbow down, you've got the elbow up. Yeah. And then when you when you try to do this movement, <laughs> it doesn't want to move very easily. So if when you come up you feel that elbow dropping then it can come down and continue to point downward which is what you want the elbow to always be doing no more than a 45 degree angle all right so it's it's just fine when it's here but when it gets here uh uh yeah um and that will help that helps to free up the movement of the shoulder and keep the energy flowing through there um the other thing is i may be wrong because it's um, we're on zoom and so it's a little hard to see but it looks to me like particularly when you're going through the center that you tend to to go go into the other side somehow with the with the weight so this particular practice we're always the weight is always moving with the direction of the flow of the arm it never goes against it mm. I'm not sure that you were I it, it just looked like yeah, I know okay it just looked like you might be drop the elbow <laughs> Boy, all of a sudden it's hard. It's hard? Yeah, to do. Why? Because I'm paying attention to my elbow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to relax that shoulder and elbow. You want to let them, let it drop, let it keep its connection to the earth. Feels awkward. Hmm. It uh, uh, that's interesting. It looks better. <laughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever you make a change, uh, yes, that can obviously make it more difficult for a while.
good, good. So, any question about that? No, it's, uh, just got to get at it. Yeah. You want to try the single arm? Yeah. I get back where you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I can still see. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, that's the, actually that's pretty good, Bill. Hey. Um, the the right arm thing has still got a little bit of adjustment to go, but um, it's it's certainly much better than it was last time I really looked at it. Okay, good. Um, it's that movement is so counterintuitive to us that um, it just is really hard to wrap our minds around it <laughs> and get ourselves to to have our body do what we don't think is right <laughs> yeah on some on some level <laughs> yeah um, because it's it's um and yet, on the, it shows up in in um, in some of the other forms. Not doesn't show up in, in this particular eight gates form, but um, it does show up in the in the uh, longer Yang style. Um, so it's not it's it's not unknown <laughs> um, so the <clears throat> yeah so the the thing there is to slow down the rotation of the of the body so that you have time to do the entire S curve with the arm while you are turning in one direction. And then you're ready to go into the next part of the movement. And it's just, it is a, it is a difficult coordination. I'm not 
belittling that at all. Um, but our, our tendency is to want to go back and forth with it, and that's not, not what we're doing in this case. I, where, where are we in the uh, this is, what, well um, in the first first part? Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing that's the 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 second. So uh, let me uh, let me get up to it. So if we're uh, we've done the the first part and we've gotten to here. Now this is where we are. We want to make sure a that a that you're rotated fully forward, so you have as much rotation as possible back, and then this S curve crosses the center and comes down, and then you're ready to go on into the rest. I, I, I usually do it with my left left arm. Yeah, I'm doing mirror image, so I would face faced you. <laughs> Was I throwing you off there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know what I do immediately? I say, okay, he's got his right arm up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably better if you don't mirror image. <laughs> and yet it makes it possible for you to do it with me in the same direction. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> All right, well, it'll work. It'll work. It'll work. Yeah. Oh, you did some good work today. That's, that's great. You know, yeah, this was really good, uh, especially that first part with the breathing and, and, and that stuff. I, I have to take time out to work on that rather than to jump right in. Yeah, it um, helps. The, and you know, the nice thing about the breathing is you can do, you're sitting, you know, down. Um, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a, quote, practice time. <laughs> you just, you find yourself sitting or standing around waiting somewhere. You just breathe a bit. Think about the breathing. Um, it you can do it. Nice thing is you can do it anywhere. Nobody's going to know what you're doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? uh, eventually you don't care, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, well, that gives you enough to least to work on. Oh, this was great. Um, it, it was. I, I feel good about this. Good. Uh, so do I. And I'm, I'm sorry Dave wasn't here, but um, I'm sure he'll find some useful bits and pieces in here, too. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Well, say hi to, hi to the lovely Jean. Okay. All right. And, um, and oh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. How is your driveway, by the way? The driveway's fine. Oh, it, you, it's not your driveway, it's the road in? It's the road in. Oh, that. Gee, I'm used to that. Yeah, you know, being up in Maine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, right. You know, we have so many dirt roads that we end up on that, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the hill and dale type of road yeah well the you, last last rain was really destructive now who 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 scrapes for you the city the town oh goodness but i don't expect them anytime soon right um, yeah see the fire road we're on up in maine um there's a guy that has quite a bit of property right about in the middle. Yeah. And he's a ex major contractor. I mean, he's got, he's got three or four big hunking pieces of equipment and he <laughs> scrapes the road. He, he gets the gravel, he spreads.